what we're doing here is we're removing the pump. We're going to set up our pump station set up over there right as part of the drainage along the wall. And we're going to close this back up and give them back this part of their basement floor again as, as usable space. If you look over here, there's a trench here. This had a pipe in it uh, that was supposedly connecting the drainage on the wall over to where the sump basket. Now we've already pulled this sump basket up. This was down and flush. The top of this was flush with, with the floor. Uh, but the idea was is that water would collect in that gutter and then get through this pipe and get over to this sump pump. The way the other system was managing the water, or I should say where it was managing the water, was within the depth of the floor. So water was filling up around the entire floor. The concrete floor was sitting in water. And that concrete is porous, so it constantly was absorbing and evaporating water out of it. So there always was a dampness issue. And then with stronger storms, because of how little drainage and how high or how close it was to the top of the floor, it would be overwhelmed and water would pour over top of the floor with that particular type of system. So if you look at how much drainage was in the original system and then how much drainage is in now, you can see we've created a significant amount of drainage that's all going to be pitched to come over into this pump station. So we need, need to make sure that we have that four inches. So we have here, we have four inches, we have four inches plus, we have four inches plus here, and we do that periodically around where we're doing, where we're putting in the drainage. So if you recall, their drainage was actually right along here and sitting like this. If you can see, the weep holes are above where their drainage is. I mean, this is ridiculous. If you're ever gonna tap into a block wall, in order to drain the wall, you have to make sure that whatever drainage you have that's going to be taking the water down to where your conduit is, you would want this to at least be up like that. Can't do it with this particular type of system. So right off the bat, this is the wrong system for this type of foundation. The idea is you got to make sure that you get the right type of waterproofing system for your particular type of foundation or you're wasting a whole lot of money for something that's not giving you anywhere near the results or the effectiveness that you're looking for. Just look at the difference between the two. You're managing the water here or you're managing it about 10 to 12 inches below here with about 20 times the drainage. And the thing is, is that they're both about the same price. We've talked at length about how this manages the water within the depth of the floor. There's another type of system that's out there that doesn't sit right on top of the footing, but it sits at the exact same level. It just sits out from the footing a little bit. Now this is a clean out one of the several that they'll put in when they're installing the drainage. And basically what it is is a cap that allows you to flush the system out for these annual or, or even twice a year maintenance regimes that they have to go through. So, and this is a cap. So if the cap is there, you know that the, that the entire cementing process has to go around here so that you'd be able to lift the cap off. You kind of got to figure out how much concrete am I getting back? So with this system, Pretty comparable to this and how much concrete you're going to get back. But the key thing is you can see where you're managing the water on this. The water has got to fill up this high in order for any water to travel through this type of a system. We have our sump station set up and it's right in line with the rest of the drainage. Unlike the, the previous system had the, the sump basket cut through the center of the floor and was placed in the middle of the basement. So water had to go fill up around the floor and work through this pipe to get over to where it would be pumped out and out away from the house. Proper way to do this to have your drainage and your pump station right in line with the other drainage so that you can have a pitch going from that far side around into the basket here and from that side all the way around into the basket here. And as you can see, we haven't turned, we've just put the pump in, we haven't even turned it on for its, uh, its first run. But you can see the amount of water that's already collected in here in just uh, several minutes.
here's the kind of water that we're gonna we're we're gonna test it with. And I'm just gonna say if you can imagine if we put this test to the previous system that was in here, that gutter system. So let me just turn the water off. And I'm gonna come behind here and I'm gonna put put our put this pipe down here. And watch and see what happens. Right now, if we were using that other gutter system, this area would be completely filling up with water and it'd be getting close to overflowing on the floor. We actually don't have enough time to really test this because we could leave it on here indefinitely and you're never ever going to fill this up that it gets anywhere near the level where the gutter system has to have the water be for it to flow through it. This is just not going to happen. If you look down here, other than when I just kind of sprayed it a little bit when I was putting the hose back there, no water, no water was filling up down in this trench down here. So we can leave this for quite some time. Actually, you can leave it indefinitely because our pumping station is going to pump 10 times quicker than the water that we're putting in here. And our drainage is so big, it's so significant that this amount of water, which is more than you're ever going to run into with rainstorms, um, is never ever going to build up and accumulate and even test this particular type of system. So I'm just going to let this run for a while. Well, we pretty much wrapped it up. We've come in and we found a, an existing system that just wasn't doing it. It was getting overwhelmed and the basement was flooding time and time again. And we saw that it was just the wrong match. So we're able to drop where we manage that water from within the depth of the floor, 10 to 12 inches below the bottom of the floor. And the effect of that one change dries out the entire basement, allows the entire floor to stay completely dry. And as always, if you have questions about your particular type of foundation, give us a call, look us up at americandry.com, or put a question in below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.